the Predator, Francis Ngannou, is back. Everybody's so happy to see this. PFL, the Battle of the Giants. The production value was terrible. <laughs> the fight was pretty incredible. <laughs> uh, that sums it up. Going into this match, Francis Ngannou had been off from MMA for almost three years. His last match was against Stipe Miocic in the UFC before he had a, a big contract battle with the UFC before eventually signing on with the PFL. He then went on to have a glorious match. A boxing fight against Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury. where he did very well. He uh, kind of shocked the world by dropping Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, many consider him the best heavyweight in the world at the moment. He lost the decision, some say controversially. Controversial. He then went on till this year, 2024, to fight Anthony Joshua, and he gets starched. That was in March. Tragically, in April, his one-year-old son mm. dies suddenly. So Francis is in, is in a is in a bad place. Yeah. But he has signed to fight Henan Ferreira in the PFL. Henan Ferreira is probably the the main and only threat in the heavyweight division in the PFL. We we watched some of Henan Ferreira's uh, highlights. He's a scary guy. He Absolutely has terrifying. Lightning fast hands. He is a knockout artist. Fast hands, fast feet. A little bit lacking in the grappling, and that is what Francis used to his advantage. Francis showed himself to be a true mixed martial artist, mm. mixing it up, and it was it was an amazing victory. I was a little bit scared for Francis yeah. just because of how yeah. how scary Ferreira looked against Ryan Bader in uh, PFL's last heavyweight tournament. I was I was worried about Francis three years off. Leading up to this I had listened to uh, a Chael Sonnen podcast where he he claims that John Jones had also after watching Henan Ferreira live at the heavyweight tournament picked Henan Ferreira to knock out Francis. John Jones without hesitation Pick Fahera. Yeah. In Conor McGregor also put down five hundred thousand dollars <laughs> yes. in Ferrara to win. Wild. So this was a very dangerous fight. But Francis Ngata came out very strategic. He was throwing leg kicks, which I don't remember him ever doing that. Maybe he did against Stipe. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But he came out very nice leg kicks, threw a couple punches, but not really, and then shot a great takedown, moved into half guard, dropped bombs, and flattened this man out. Late referee stoppage. Very late one. referee stoppage. <laughs> Daniel Mergliata possibly waiting to see if if he would be knocked out and then revitalized and yeah. maybe he put some money on the match. I think he's now an accessory to murder. <laughs> <laughs> In true Dan Hardy fashion, Dan Hardy used to commentate for the UFC. Yes. He got fired, we think, and this is kind of internet sleuthing, we think because he started yelling at the ref one time about a late stoppage. Yeah, he went after Herb, he went after Herb Dean yeah, about stop the stoppaging. Fight. Stop yeah. the fight, you got to do your job. Like that, and now he's in the PFL commentating this fight. <laughs> and I think correctly, he was like, he's out, he's yeah, out. He was, he was and out. then five more punches later, Ferris face down snoring. A lot of unanswered, a lot of unanswered blows, but yes. From the hardest puncher <laughs> in the world. Amazing job by Ngano. The world behind him, well, the world as far as anybody that knew that this fight was happening. I, yeah. think, I think a lot of people didn't know that this fight was happening. I talked to you last week and I, I said to you, and Gano's fighting this weekend. And you're like, really? Yeah. 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 I went to a party on Saturday. I was telling people about it. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, not a, not a very well-promoted fight. Maybe PFL, uh, something they could work on is their promotion. They have a lot of things to work on. The promotion, <laughs> the sound during their event. I was listening on headphones and the whole time there's like a mumble in the background. I don't know if it's like another announced team. I don't know if I'm listening to a corner, but I kept thinking someone's behind me. Yeah, a and terrible it, feeling when you're trying to watch an event. Yeah, as as uh, the fight was about to start, the Engano fight was about to start, you could hear the crew talking to each other, um, the audio leaked through. So yeah, some some things, some things to work on, but overall, a great event. We're gonna break down how Francis Ngannou beat Henan Ferreira. I'm about to get hit in the face 45 <laughs> times. So in the match, um, Francis and Henan are, they start off by feeding each other leg kicks. Francis starts off, 
He kicks Hennen in the leg. He spins him around a little bit. Hennen answers back. Francis kicks again, but Hennen checks the kick by lifting his leg, and they start going back and forth. As they're, as they're kind of going back and forth, Hennen is fainting. Hennen actually drops his hands at one point to try to bring Francis in. Hennen has the hand speed, so I think Hennen was trying to get Francis to exchange with him. But Francis, like I said, in uh, this smart MMA fashion, he doesn't really bite on the bait as Hennen drops his hands. But as he dr draws him towards the fence a little bit, then Francis starts to go a little bit with the hands. He's missing with the hands and he goes to shoot a double. As he goes to shoot a double, as Hennen is maybe thinking of sprawling, Francis switches to a single leg and he drops him with the single leg. Hennen puts one butterfly in. Francis kind of squeezes this one butterfly so he has the one butterfly in and then Francis actually takes him and starts to push him up, push his head towards the fence. So we'll just pretend this is a fence here. So he pushes his head up against the fence. And Hennen very wisely goes for this grapevine move, which drops Francis's posture. Yeah. If he doesn't have this, Francis is sitting up, dropping like the hardest bombs humanly possible. But with this, he's dropped down. He's got some control. From here, it looks like he's going for a Kimura. But what it, we think he's going for actually is to get this arm out of the way to shoot a nice triangle. Yeah, so he gets wrist control and then he actually shoots up a triangle. But he doesn't have the legs completely in the triangle position. So for a good triangle, you need your legs in the actual triangled position. So the closed triangle needs to be here. Hennen ends around here. He doesn't get fully, fully locked in. So they're here. So they're here. And the reason why is because Francis is doing a good job of keeping his posture high. If, if Francis were to drop down, then Hennen would have been able to close the triangle. So this is a kind of a traditional triangle defense. Coach might tell you, keep your head up. Don't let your head drop. So Francis does a good job in keeping his head up. And then he starts to apply pressure with this shoulder onto the, the choking leg of the triangle. So he starts to lean here to try to break the triangle. He brings his knee up. Now it looks almost as if he's pinning Hennen down to escape, but he doesn't fully get to this pinning position, but he does get his posture high enough that Hennen cannot complete the triangle. And he hips in and he drops Hennen almost into side mount. Now Hennen does a good job in he recovers. Hennen recovers this half guard, but this is almost the end for Hennen. So from here, Francis starts just laying punches into the side of Hennen's head, some to the back of the head, and Hennen comes up with the underhook to try to start to stand up. So can you show what Hennen would, should be doing or would be doing? Yeah. Yes, so that underhook, this is, this is a good underhook, is a good, uh, a good strategy, but the problem in MMA is this this hand is open here, so it's not going to be as easy for him to get up. And with a guy as heavy as Francis with the punches, it only takes one or two to, to make you not think straight. Takes uh, one or two and he ate 30. Yeah, so then from there he goes from the half guard and he goes into the turtle. With the turtle, Francis, this may or may not have been consequential, but I did notice that Francis, he, he, he kneels on this calf, which makes it a little bit harder for, for Marshall to get up. It won't be impossible for him to get up, but it does, it does pin him in the position a little bit. So he puts his knee on the calf to stop him, and he has a hand here in the overhook position, but he doesn't go for the seat belt position, almost as if he's about to attack the back. But instead, what he does is he just switches hands. He punches here. 
and then he switches to here and just boom, boom, boom. And maybe with three of those, Henan is out. So he's out here on his hands and knees, and then he takes a few more and he goes completely flat. And then he takes maybe a couple more unanswered shots before the ref steps in. Then he sits on his leg for a little bit to rest. Then he moves back here and that's when the, the emotion comes and a very emotional triumphant moment for Francis. Quite a, quite a match, quite a return. Picture perfect, I would say. Close to a flawless victory as we could ask for. I was super, yeah, super flawless. I don't think he got hurt at all. Let's Triangle see. a little dangerous, but not really. Triangle is dangerous. Yeah. Uh, Henan, he, he has uh, triangled people in the past. Um, I was looking at some of the comments online. One of the comments says the ref was like, if he dies, he dies. The referee wanted to make sure that Ferreira is dead. And uh, one of our favorite guys, our favorite, one of our favorite bad guys, John Jones, commented. And he says, what an amazing job Francis did tonight. Jones wrote in a message to his nearly 3 million followers, displayed a complete MMA game. Great kicks, great takedowns. It feels good to see him shine. Yeah. Wow, congratulations, champ. I see you. However, his nice act only lasted a few moments as he sent a veiled threat in response to a fan claiming that Ngano would smoke him. Sure, he wrote, everyone beats me until they're in there with me. Yeah. But what do you expect? These are fighters. That's very reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think great don't, job. You're not going to beat me. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I don't you're think great. I don't think uh, I think the reporter maybe is trying to to add some some spice to a message that I think any fighter when they're told that somebody's going to beat them the the automatic response will and should be no, I'm the best. So, Especially if you're John Jones. Who is the best? And I think We'd any probably beat him. Yeah, <laughs> and I also think any fighter should believe they're the best. Otherwise, what are you what are you doing in there? But yeah, what else do you think? It was a great night, though. Uh, like I said, Chris Cyborg regained the title, so I think she has titles in pretty much every league she's ever touched. Yeah, um, possibly the goat female next to Amanda Nunes. Well, yeah, she, she did got be, knocked she, out yeah. by Nunes. <laughs> she, did, she did get knocked out by Nunes. But she has been like champ in everything she's touched as well. So yeah, what do you think is next for for Francis? Do we know? Do you have an idea? There, there's some talks about boxing again, possibly against Deontay Wilder. Deontay yeah. Wilder is kind of on the decline in his in his boxing career. He's been knocked out a few times after going undefeated. I can't remember. He went on a crazy, crazy run, but he's been kind of in a in a decline. So there's there's talks about him. He's a very exciting fighter. Yeah, big name. Uh, big name. He's a knockout artist. Not so not maybe as skilled of a boxer as say Tyson Fury, but uh very big name. Mm. So I don't know. We don't know what's what's next for Francis. I don't really see many challenges for him in the PFL unless they they bring more new talent in. Yeah, even then it would have to be like UFC guys, right? Yeah, it would be like probably Sergei retired, retired UFC guys. Yeah. Yeah, so. so the fight everybody wants to see, Francis Ngannou against John Jones. Supposedly there is possibility that could happen, but don't hold your breath. John Jones tweeted about your victory. Did you happen to see that? Yeah, I saw that. I saw his tweet. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, was very... we'll show it. What did you think of it? Great. Here it is. What an amazing job Francis did tonight. Displayed a complete MMA game. Great kicks. Great takedowns. It feels good to see him shine. Wow. Congratulations, champ. I see you. Yeah. Well, whatever it means, I, I, th I think it's class. He said in a, in, a, in a very nice way, you know. So I see him too. And I'll be watching him on November 16th. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, man. That's the one that everyone says. Why not? They're, they're both with ESPN. <laughs> Maybe Turkey has a hand in it. Do you think there's any chance this happens in 2025, you versus the winner of that fight or the UFC heavyweight champion? There's a chance. I, I can't tell uh, uh, on the level of one to 10, I can't tell how many, but I know there's a chance. Um, obviously a, a great fight would be Francis Ngannou and Tom Aspinall. 
But at this point, that seems even less likely. Yeah, less likely. So, yeah, the cross promotional idea. I don't. I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, it's possible. It's possible. Jones, they have Saudi Arabian money. That's so true. All things possible. Saudi Arabian <laughs> money. That's true. Jones is uh, is has hinted that he's planning to retire after his fight next month with Stipe. So we'll see how that goes. What I hope is what I hope. Because Francis did not take damage in this fight, he should be ready to fight in a month, right? Mm. Stipe Miocic, nobody really wants to see Stipe fight, right? He, he's got a big name, but who cares, right? So here's what they do. Night of the fight, they say, Stipe, he cut his hand, he can't do it. <laughs> who will fight? And John Jones says, well, I'm here, I've got to yeah. fight somebody. And the Undertaker music hits, and Francis Nagano walks out with the hat and the eyes rolled back. And uh, he fights John Jones on one day notice. What do you think? Sounds cool, but John Jones never fights on short. <laughs> part of part of John Jones's greatness is is just how planned out everything okay. is. John and Jones drops out. Tom Aspinall jumps that's in. That's more likely. Yeah, that's more likely. I don't think John Jones. John Jones is not a, a short notice guy. He's yeah. he he will not fight if he hasn't been able to plan the the match out for for a month in advance. So. Yeah, I don't see that happening with John Jones, but it's, it is a nice thought. Thanks. <laughs> I hope I never have to watch PFL again. It made me really appreciate how good the UFC is. And I really, I was really looking forward to it because someone told me years ago that they would saw the PFL on like American television. It was just on like, it's on TV. Yeah. Like the production value is incredible. It usually is. I think, I think last night was particularly bad. Like I've seen was, maybe, I've, I've only seen two or three PFL events. I can't say that I'm a PFL like avid watcher, but uh, last night there were there were some mistakes being made. And even like I was, I was really excited that the referee have glasses. Yeah, I thought that's such a cool idea. And then they showed it, and it looks terrible. Yeah, it's, their their glasses were dumb. their glasses were dirty. Actually, I think really? I think they. Like it, the, the lenses? It just looked like a dirty lens to me. Oh, man. Yeah, so I think there are a lot of, like... Uh, Could have been great. Yeah, there are a lot of cross, cross eyes and dotted... No? Cross T's. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cross T's and dotted eyes that didn't, that didn't take place. They have a potential to be, uh, to be competitive. Like, yeah. to be a competitive number three after 1FC. The UFC, 1FC, then they could even possibly be number PFL. Two. Possibly. I think that's two. the competition. The competition is who can be number two. Um, they could be number two, but... the uh, fights were good. They were good. They Everything were good else fights. sucks. Yeah, so... What can you do? Even like... Um, <laughs> the, there's, there's a comment on Reddit, like, why were there horns going off during the fight? It's like, oh, Africans. <laughs> but I've never heard that, like, in the UFC. Do you think in the UFC you can be blowing horns? Is that even, like... I don't know. I, I, what do you mean in the audience? In the audience, right? Oh, like uh, yeah, I remember that from um, the South African um, World Cup. It was constant right. horns. It all sounds through, terrible. All through the whole thing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you if because if the, that UFC would has, in the UFC has like Nagano was there. Like they have African champions. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they've been in Africa, but I wonder. Oh, I wonder, were, I wonder they if the they would like East. snatch their horns or something. Probably. probably Think so. Because what's his name? Drickus. Drickus. He's South African. Right. Yeah. So his fans would be horn blowers, possibly. Yeah, according to this, yeah, <laughs> this yeah, little yeah, theory. Yeah. So. I wonder. I don't know. It did sound terrible. I don't like <laughs> it. But I imagine it's fun to be that guy. Yeah, I don't yeah. mind it. I don't mind. I don't mind a little bit of chaos. I like. I like a little bit of chaotic sound coming from the audience. It it, it adds to the uh, to the intensity, which is like the opposite of say fights in the what is it. Remember when the UFC was having fights in the what do you call that place? Oh, the Apex. In the Apex, Man, where you it's quiet. Where, where you hear nothing. You, you hear just, people walking. You hear, <laughs> you hear the slapping sounds. You hear the coaches talking. Yeah. You hear coughing. The fighters can hear the commentators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the opposite. So I don't mind the chaos. I would say they're just they just need to clean up a little bit of the the production mistakes they were making. But uh, yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. Shout out to Francis. Shout out to. Uh, his opponent. Yeah, hope even he, I'm excited to see that guy's next fight. Yeah, Ferreira. He's. Yeah. I mean, he's. He, uh, he reminds me of uh, a younger Francis, like Francis coming in. Francis came in with a lot of a lot of power punches. Um, Ferreira. He has the power. He has the speed. Yeah. I think he just as he if he progresses in his grappling, 
he'll be a super dangerous, he's, he, I mean, he's already a super dangerous guy, but he'll be a more super dangerous, well-rounded person. Yeah. And he won't be described as being powerful, but, but green. Here's what I want. Henan Ferreira against Cyril Gan. That's a fun fight. That'd be, be great. It would be a fun fight. Can I make it happen, guys? Let's do it. Leave a comment if you can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Taipei BJJ. Marshall Stamper. Tarek Finn. Oh, so nice of the construction guys to wait for us.